guys, it's Mike from Cosmic Sound. Today we're going to be looking at Pioneer's new wireless DJ controller, the XDJ R1. Uh, we're going to be looking at a comprehensive review of the control surface itself, so what's on it. I'm going to show you how to connect your iPad to it and how the new remote box application works with the XDJ. And I'm going to be giving you a bit of an idea as to why you might want to pick this over something like the Pioneer DDJSX or another digital DJ controller that's on the market. So what have we got here? Well, if you're familiar with the CDJ350s, then you'll be very familiar with uh, some of the layout features here on the XDJ. The actual display itself is pretty much identical. There are a few little tweaks and changes that they've made. The jog wheels are a little bit different. They actually feel a lot smoother than what the 350s did. But in terms of the general layout and uh, the 350 pack, or the little monster pack as it was called, um, pretty much the same sort of thing. But in fact, we're actually gonna get a lot more features on this and some features that are only reserved for some of the most high-end systems like the uh, CDJ2000s. So on the control surface itself, the display is actually pretty much identical to what you would have got on the CDJ350. You have a few lines of text, a bit of a track duration um, and BPM and pitch and a few things like that. Below that you've got effects, so you've got, some, you've got the trans effect, flanger, echo and slip roll a level of depth control and the interval control. So all your main uh, track effects for each individual deck are there on the deck itself. So they're not found in the mixer section as you traditionally find in a DJ mixer. The jog wheels, they're really nice and smooth. Very impressed with uh, what they've done here. They've actually borrowed the jog wheel from the new DDJ SX, DDJ SR controllers. Very smooth uh, and is, is great for things like scratching. Um, to the right here, we've got our tempo control, master tempo and uh, tempo pitch um, controls. Uh, we can choose our tracks on the right, a shift button, which is gonna give you a few more functions, uh, like searching through the track, so we can hold shift, scroll through the track. Below that, our familiar Pioneer Q, play and pause button, which function exactly like all of the CDJ series. Um, which is a big advantage if you are looking at getting into club standard mixing because this will operate in exactly the same way as all of the other club standard systems, but more on that later. Below that we have our hot cue and four beat sampler section. So this is what I was talking about with the, uh, the stuff normally reserved for the high end systems. Hot cues, A, B and C. Normally you'd only find that in a CDJ2000, that's always been the case. We also have a four beat sampler, which I'll, I'll go into detail with in a moment. In the bottom right of each deck, we have our master and sync button. So the way this works, you're gonna to have to run your tracks through record box first, so it can analyze where the beat grids are. And uh, once you've done that, it'll automatically de detect that there are beat grid information. And then we can hit the sync or master button uh, for automatically matching the tempo of the two tracks. Jumping across to the mixer section, we have a real two channel mixer. So what we can do here is pretty flexible. We can connect up two external decks and we can mix between any combination of digital and analog. So if you've got a CDJ or turntable connected, we can mix one deck here on the XDJ. We can mix across to the CDJ by the dip switch at the top here. We can click across to phone or line and vice versa as in as many combinations as you want. As with all Pioneer mixers, we have a three band EQ, so low, mid and high, a trim at the top, master levels directly in the center, as well as a booth monitor, very handy to have. Uh, we've got headphones mixing control just to the left of the EQs, so our main Q, master and level. Below that, we have another feature borrowed from the high end systems, the DJM 900 or 850 or 700 mixers. We have sound color effects. Now the way to access these, pretty simple. All we do is basically choose the desired effect. And that can be like a filter or a bit crusher uh, and we can just introduce it by dialing it in uh, left or right. Below that we have two standard channel faders which have a nice adhesive weight to them, a good cross fader and uh, a mic channel with a mic on and off switch to the right of it. So one of the biggest selling points of the XDJ R1 is its wireless compatibility. Pioneer kind of teased this at first with the XDJ Aero, allowing wireless connection with uh, the Record Box app, but now they've kind of taken it up a notch with their own wireless uh, application called Remote Box. Basically what it is, is a application for your iDevice, so your iPad or your iPhone, uh, which allows you to connect the XDJ to the device 
and allows you to control almost every parameter on the control surface, plus some extras as well. Now, the first thing you want to do is download and run your entire music library through Pioneer's Record Box app, which we uh, have on the screen here. Basically, what that's going to allow you to do is do all of your music management before you get to the gig. So hot cues, track comments, BPM readings, beat grids, all that extra stuff that's going to be really useful and handy to have prepared. Uh, can be done in record box and then exported to a USB stick. Once you've done that, you want to download the Remote Box app on your iDevice, whether that's iPad or iPhone. It's going to work in exactly the same way. So once you've installed it, the next thing you want to do is get your iPad connected. The first step to this is finding out what your wireless password is. Uh, and to do that, we want to jump into the Info and Utility section by pressing and holding the Info Utility button, selecting Wireless LAN Info, scrolling down to the password. Select that and there's your password. Once you've done that, jump across to the iDevice, to your wireless settings, and then find the XDJ R1 listed there. Once you've clicked that, enter your password and you'll be connected. So once we're connected, we're gonna connect our USB stick, which has been pre-formatted with record box, and open the remote box app. So the first screen that we're gonna get is one that allows you to choose which part of the XDJ R1 you wanna control. So we've got USB browse, which allows us to search for tracks and choose tracks. FX1 and FX2, so dedicated effects control for each deck, a mixer section, and deck one and deck two, which are all separate of each other. First one we're gonna check out is the USB browse section. So as we can see here, we've got all of our music listed as you'd expect to find it in the record box library on a desktop computer. Straight away, we can see the advantage here in the visual aspect. We can see everything clearly laid out alphabetically or as we've sorted it in record box, or of course, we can search for tracks just like we would on a computer. Once we've chosen the track that we want, it's just a matter of clicking through a couple of menus and you'll see we have three options. We can either load it into deck A, deck B, or we can send it to our tag list. Now your tag list is your short list of tracks that you think that you might wanna play um, that you need to remember to play later in the night but aren't suitable yet. So you can chuck it in your tag list for easy uh, recall. Uh, as soon as you're ready to load the track into a deck, just press load one or load two and you'll see the actual physical deck corresponds. One strong point I wanna make here is the stability of the hardware and the wireless connection. Because the wireless router is built into the XDJ1 itself, the uh, iPad is only sending very, very small MIDI information telling the controller what to do and what songs to load. So none of the show critical information such as the playback of the tracks, the effects, the actual audio files are being sent wirelessly from the iPad. They're all stored, uh, stored locally on the USB stick and sourced locally. So nothing is going to uh, drop out and leave you in the lurch in front of a room full of people. So the next section across, and we can browse them across the top here, is our mixer section. Now this is pretty straightforward, self-explanatory. We have our two main channel faders, so channel one and channel two, our cross fader, booth monitor controls, channel trims, and EQs. We've also got headphone controls, for mixing, and selectable cues as well. So that's just a dedicated screen for the mixer on its own. So now moving across to our FX1 screen. This is kind of an all-in-one uh, performance mode screen. Basically what it's gonna give you is the ability to browse through the tracks like a strip search, normally again, only reserved for the CDJ 2000s. Uh, we can seek through a track and drop it at any point we want. We have a smaller condensed version of our mixer. We have our full effects section here, controllable on an XY controller. And I think this is probably one of the coolest uh, utilizations of the iDevice because it is touchscreen. It allows us to choose two effects, so Across the top, we choose one, and down the side, we choose another, and then we can control a combination of those two effects across an X and Y grid. So here I'm choosing an echo on the top and a crush on the bottom, and we can control the interval of the echo as well as the intensity of the crush. Next screen over is our main deck control or an individual deck control which we control looping, 
uh, and our hot cues and sample triggers. So auto beat loops, pretty straightforward. All we have to do is pick an interval. And press the interval again to get out of the loop. Below our beat loops, we have the hot cue section. Now we can do two things here. We can either pre-program our hot cues in the record box library, um, preemptively before we get to the gig, or we can do it live on the fly. So we can choose a spot live by cueing it or doing it as the track is playing. Before we do that though, we wanna check to see if our quantize is on or off. If quantize is on, what it's gonna do is basically synchronize a hot cue to where it thinks the downbeat is on the track. So that may seem like it's uh, not as responsive as with it off. Basically all it's doing is trying to synchronize it to the actual uh, tempo of the track. If we take quantize off, we'll notice straight away that it's, it's as responsive as you could want it. With quantize on. To delete them, just hit the delete button, then press the hot cue points again. The call button, which is next to them, is designed for uh, recalling your hot cues which have been pre-programmed in Rekordbox. So underneath the hot cue button, we have the sampler button. So by pressing that, you'll see sampler highlights, and we have the ability to record up to three individual samples. We can choose how long we want to record for uh, by choosing an interval. or the last known interval from our uh, auto looping section, then simply by pressing the, either the A, B or C button and holding it. You see it highlights. We now have a sample that we can trigger over the flow of any track. These are particularly useful for things like uh, vocal samples or acapellas. If you've got a section where there's a nice clean acapella or if you have a downloaded acapella, you can create pre-programmed samples which you can recall and then loop or play over the top of other tracks. So that sort of gives you a little bit of an idea about what Remote Box can do. Obviously one of the greatest features of this is the ability to pick it up and be able to control these features uh, away from the control surface itself. So if it's a quiet night and you need to go and get yourself a drink at the bar. Another thing I want to stress with this app is that you can use it as much or as little as you want to. It's designed to be non-invasive. So take the things you like from it and leave the others behind. Personally, I like to use a mixture of the uh, track browsing and the effects control mostly, and then everything else, I like to, to have that sort of hands-on tactile approach with the control surface. So things like scratching, pitch control, my physical EQs, crossfader, uh, hot cues and sync, that's all better um, on the control surface because it's the physical feel that you don't get from a, uh, an iPad. So one of the questions I get asked all the time here is why would I pick an XDJ R1 over something like the DDJSX which at face value appears to have way more features? Well, there are a couple of key points I think. The main one is that this is a pure hardware unit as in you don't need to use a laptop with it if you don't want to. Now, I'll, granted laptops are far more stable than they used to be is still nowhere near as stable as having something that relies on just the flash media and is designed and dedicated to do exactly what it's supposed to do. You can still use this unit with software, so it does ship with a copy of Virtual DJ and there are maps out there for Tractor, but it is really designed that the laptop be left at home and you use, uh, use it with the remote box or the record box music management applications. Another huge advantage of this is once you're on record box and you're managing all your music this way, it is now the industry standard platform for all club DJs. So if you've got an aspiration to move into big room stuff, uh, clubs or any venue that actually houses a set of CDJs, you are fully prepared. So all CDJs now utilize record box libraries. So if you've got a USB stick with that, you just drop it in the relevant CDJ and it'll download your information to the player. So that's the XDJ R1. It's a great wireless controller uh, with some really progressive features from Pioneer ultra portable, ultra stable, and the connectivity with the iPad offers some really unique features that DJs have never had before. For more information or to purchase, come in store or jump online to www.cosmic.com.au.